So in this video, I'm going to be showing you all of the DOM manipulation techniques you need to know to be able to manipulate the DOM effectively in the vast majority of situations that you would come across. So to demonstrate this, I've created this HTML document here that we're viewing in the browser. I will show you the markup. So within the body of this document, I have a main tag. Nested within the main tag is a H1 title and an article tag and nested inside the article tag is an image element, my banner, and also some paragraph. So this replicates a basic article format. And at the bottom of the page, this document is linking to script.js. So let's head over there because it's there that I'm going to be walking through the DOM manipulation examples. So let's start with how we create, add, and remove an element from the DOM. Now, just before that, I'm going to head back to the HTML document because I want to delete this image element. I'm going to be reinserting that to the DOM using JavaScript. So we do that by calling document.createElement. And then we pass into here in string format a valid HTML tag name, and it's going to create an element of that type. So we could say p for paragraph, uh, div for a div, span, whatever you like. But what I'm going to pass into here is image because I want to insert that image banner into the DOM. So I'm going to save this in a new variable called image. Now an image is a special element in that we can access its source in JavaScript by using dot notation src and the source location of the banner image is in the same folder. So I can just write it out directly. It's banner.jpg. Now I've created an element and set the source, but if I head over to the page, you'll see that it's nowhere to see. And if I open the console, you'll see that we're encountering no error. So the issue here that sometimes confuses people at first is that when you create an element in this way, it's not been appended to the DOM yet. It exists in JavaScript in memory, but it hasn't been appended. So we still have to do that. That brings us on to how we add elements to the DOM. So probably the most common way you'll see this done is using append. Now append is applied to an element and the body of the document is also an element. So I'm going to apply this to the body and then I apply append to it and then I pass in what I want to append. So in this case, it's the image and this is going to, and this is going to append image at the bottom of the page because it's at the bottom of the body at the moment. So the nice thing about append is it's really flexible. So I can append multiple things to the DOM at the same time. So I'll just enter some text here. You can see it's appending both a string and the image to the DOM. You can see that the string is inserted to the DOM after the image. So they are appended in the order that you insert them. Now, if you want to insert something as first content within an element, you can change append to prepend, applying it to the element you want to insert it to. So I'll say document.body again. And now you can see the banner is at the top of the page. And just like append with prepend, you can insert multiple bits of content to the DOM at the same time. Now for the most complex insertion method we will look at, I'm going to insert this banner before the second paragraph here. So just before this text here. So for this, I can use the insert before method. What I need to do to use it is first of all, determine what element is the parent of the paragraphs. So if I head over to my HTML document, you can see that they are in the article elements. So I'm going to give this an ID of article. So it's easy to select from within JavaScript. So to use insert before you apply it to the parent. So the parent is document.getElementById and we call that article. And I'm going to save that as a new variable here called article. Now I'm going to apply insert before And within the parentheses, insert before takes 
two arguments. So the first one is the new element I want to insert. Okay, so that's pretty simple. That is image. And the second one is the element I want to insert image before. So that's the second paragraph within article. So to select that, I can take advantage of the flexibility of the query selector. So I'm going to say query selector all, applying it to article. So I'm going to be searching for elements within article and I want to get I want to get the second paragraph and I can find that index using square brackets. So it's a second paragraph, it's one because JavaScript starts counting from zero. So what I need to do is either save this within the variable or what I can do if I don't want to create a variable, I can just place it directly into the argument position. Okay, so let's have a look and check if that worked. So that is now being inserted before the second paragraph within article. Now a little trick, if you want to insert it after that paragraph, you only have to make a slight modification. You can either change this to two, or you can say next sibling, and then it's effectively insert after. There is no insert after method in JavaScript. So it's this little hack that allows you to do it. So the final method in this category that I want to show you is how do you remove an element from the DOM? So I'm going to try and remove the title here. So to do that, I first of all need to select the title. So looking back at the HTML document, it has an ID of my title. So first of all, so first of all, I'll select it in the regular way using get element by ID. And the name of that is my title. I'll say that in a variable title. And then I just apply the remove method to title. Okay, so I can just do that and that will be removed from the DOM. Now it's removed from the DOM, but it's still in JavaScript. So if I say after this, document.body.prepend title, that's going to bring it back. JavaScript still has it in memory for the rest of your script. It's just removed from the DOM. But that is as good as removed from the perspective of a user. Okay, so the next set of DOM manipulation techniques I want to show you, I have titled under the category content settings. So we're talking about inner HTML, inner text and text content. And what these allow you to do is to set the content within an element and you can also get the content within an element with these. So to get started, I'm going to select an element. I'm going to select the article element, which has an ID of article. I'm going to save that in a variable called article. There's no naming clash there because I commented out the code above. And now I can easily access the inner HTML property within article by using dot notation. Now, if I just do this, I'm accessing the inner HTML. So let me show you that in the console log. Okay, I'm going to head over there now, and you can see here's the HTML inside of article with all the paragraph tags and everything. Now, if I want to set the inner HTML inside of article, I can do that by just giving inner HTML property a new value. And this can be text, so I'll just render some text. And that is now the content inside of article, but this isn't the reason you would usually use inner HTML Inner HTML is useful because it renders whatever content you set it to as HTML in the DOM. So if I place some text now inside H2 tags, it's not going to print the H2 tags to the DOM. It's going to print some text inside of a H2 element. So this can be very useful for writing HTML from JavaScript and inserting that into the DOM. So that's in a HTML. Now, if you want to set the content inside of an element to just text, you would either use inner text or text content. So inner text works just like in a HTML, but it prints just the text. So you can see here the H2 tags have been printed to the DOM this time. The other way I can do it is to set the text content property of article. And I'm going to, I'm refreshing now, 
you can see that there's no difference in the output. So you might be wondering what's the difference between inner text and text content. So the basic difference is that inner text preserves formatting, whereas text content does not. And you'll see what I mean if I create a multi-line string instead of this one line string here. So let's say I create an address. Okay, I'm just gonna copy that a few times so that it's multi-line. So text content is going to completely ignore all of this formatting, so it's going to be rendered to the DOM all on one line. But if I used inner text, it would preserve the lines like that. So you might be wondering if there's really any use for text content. The answer is yes, there's one very big advantage of text content over inner text, and that is that it returns all text within an element, even if it's not visible to the user. So if I create a paragraph here, this is some text. So what I'm going to do is nest this text sum inside of a span and I'm going to set the style of that to display none so it's hidden and to override any existing CSS I'm using I'm going to use important. Now if I log the content of article to the console using text content you will see all of the text, even the sum, which is set to display hidden at the moment. But, but if I try to get the inner text, this is not going to appear in the console log. So text content is very useful when you want to ignore all of the styling to get all of the text inside an element. Inner text, because inner text is sensitive to formatting, it won't return any non-human readable text. So you can get caught out using inner text so that is it for content setting. Now we're going to move on to working with attributes. I'm going to copy this down here. So we have the article element already selected to work with. So first of all, if I want to get the attribute of an element, I can apply the get attribute method to it. And inside I pass in a string with the name of the attribute I would like to get. So for example, class or ID. Let's get the ID, and this is going to return whatever the value of ID is. So let me log this to the console so you can see what's in there. So this is returning article, which is the ID of the article element. You can see it in the HTML there. So that's how you would return the value of an attribute. You may want to sometimes remove an attribute so for that, you can apply the remove attribute method, and then you specify the name of the attribute you would like to remove. So if I save this and I don't make a console log, what I'm going to do is run this, head over to the browser and have a look at the DOM. You'll see now that article has no ID attached to it. Next, I'm going to show you how we can set the attribute on an element. And to do that, we can use the very useful set attribute method and this takes two arguments the first one is the name of the attribute you would like to set so this could be id class in html5 you can even make up your own attribute name so so i could say status and i could put in a value there of active and that would create a new attribute on article called status with a value of active you can also use it to set traditional attributes like id and class be aware that if you set the value of an existing attribute, it's going to overwrite what is already there. Now, if you want to set the value of the special attributes ID or class, there's a shortcut for doing that. So you can say in this instance, article, then dot notation ID. This on its own will return the current value of ID. There is no ID on article at the moment. I'm going to set that to my article. And for class, you might think class, but that won't work. You have to use class list. So I can set this to whatever I want. I'm going to say visible and active. And if I head over to the DOM, 
you'll see that we now have an ID of my article and a class of visible and active. Now, if you want a more nuanced approach to setting the class, you can use methods that are available on class lists. So we know that at the moment class list is visible and active. So I can use the add method to add individual items to the class list. So I could say border two, and that's going to add that to the class list. I also have the remove method available. So I'm going to remove the active item so I just change this to remove, have active. So now we should only have visible and border two in the list. And finally, I can use the toggle method. So toggle is going to add something that isn't already there and it's gonna remove something if it is there. So if I toggle visible on the next line of my script, it's going to remove it because it's already there. So, toggle. If I run exactly the same line of code again, visible is going to reappear because I removed it and now it's being added to the document. So this can be useful for visually changing the style of an element in response to DOM events. Now the final DOM manipulation category I want to look at is editing styles. So I'm going to get rid of this going to copy this down to editing styles so we can easily select something I'm going to delete that and I'm going to change the style of the title so that had an ID of my title and I'll name that title now I can just go ahead and start writing CSS by accessing the style property and then just inserting some values so I could say color white background red, font size 100 pixels, and that is going to set all of those styles in one go in my document. So you might want to break this up into several lines of code so it's a little bit more manageable. So you can say title.style and then you access each property and set the value individually. So color white, and then again, title.style.background, going to set that to red, title.style.font font size. So you have to do this in camel case because we're working in JavaScript and I'll set that to 100 pixels as well. I'm going to comment out how I did it with the first method. So that's not affecting us. And if I refresh, this should have exactly the same impact. Now, one final thing, if you want to get the styles that are currently being applied to an element, you can use the globally available get computed styles method and then pass in the element you want to get the styles of. So if we say title, now I'm going to log this to the console so you can see it. And this is going to return an object with all the styles that are currently being applied to title. So all of the properties are listed here and you can see what is currently being applied to it. So for example, we changed the font size. You can see that the font size here is 100 pixels and let's also have a look at the background. So you can see that the background is set to red. So this can be useful if you want to run some code in response to the current visual status of an element for example, whether it's currently displayed or hidden. So that is it for this video. Like I said at the beginning, with these DOM manipulation techniques, you will be able to handle the vast majority of DOM manipulation scenarios that you will encounter in practice. So if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see more content like this on YouTube in the future.